You see, a lion, what he does is he'll set his eyes on one thing. He'll set his eyes on that, uh, that lamb or, or that sheep or that gazelle that's weak. He'll set it on the small ones. He'll set it on the young ones. He don't want to tackle the big one. It takes too much energy. But he wants those that are weak. He wants those that are angry. He wants those that are upset. He wants those that are doubting. He wants those that are not trusting the Lord. He wants those that are not doing what God said to do. And he knows he's got access to you. Now remember this. Job was an upright man. And the Bible said he was a perfect man in the sense he did what God said. So it's only right that if we don't obey God, then God backs off and opens up the hedge and says, okay, Satan, I need you to do something for me. Now see, God uses Satan to, to accomplish what he wills. You've got to realize this. God is in control. Either he is or he isn't. And if God ain't in control, you ain't saved, and none of us are saved, and none of us are going to heaven. But I know I'm saved. I know Amen. my sins are forgiven, so I know God is in control. Amen. Other than that, the devil would have destroyed us a long time ago. But I want you to notice what he said. He told him that. He said, go forth, and, uh, and only upon him put not forth thine hand. All that he has is in your power. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now sometimes God has to test us and try us with all of our possessions. Now there are three things that will come against you as a Christian. Uh, when, when you're going to live for Christ, the Bible said they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There are three different enemies that you're going to have to face from time to time. First of all, it's your biggest foe, which is Satan. Alright? He is the foe. He's the enemy. He's your adversary. The second thing, and we'll get to that in just a second, is your family. Your family is not going to understand what you're going through. Uh, they're not going to want to believe it. And, and be, why? Because they know you. Oh, that's just a thing. It's going to go away. It's all just by, over by night. And, you know, in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, it'll be over. They've been saying that for me almost 34 years now. And the next thing that's going to do it is your friends. And I'm going to show you this in just a minute. Watch. Satan knows that man tends to hide his rebellion from God. Now watch what happens. In verse 11, Satan tells God, But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now how did Satan know that? Well, this is not the first man that Satan's ever dealt with. And he knows that every time he's been allowed to attack somebody's possessions, that they've got anger, aggravated and angry with God. Remember, everything you have, you have only been given because of God's mercy and grace. That's it. Everything you have does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. It's all God's. Even your children. You don't have the right to raise your children the way you want to. The Bible said you're to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That is our responsibility. We are supposed to teach our children to believe in God. That's what the Bible tells us. There are people out there right now that were raised in church that don't believe in God. They believe they're atheists. It's amazing they believe that they're atheists, but they spend so much time trying to prove that God doesn't exist. <laughs> if you're an atheist, leave it alone. Get off of it, amen? If you're an atheist, I'm not a threat to you. I should be a blessing in your life because if I'm a Christian and I'm living right and I'm doing right, I'm not stealing from you and I'm not messing up your place and I'm not taking your things. I shouldn't be a threat to anybody that doesn't believe in God. But let me tell you who's more of a threat than an atheist. It's a person that claims to be a Christian but doesn't live like it. Amen. That's big, a bigger threat. Why? Because they're hypocrites. They say one thing and they live another. They speak out of both sides of their mouth. I love you. I hate you. I wrote, I wrote something to a woman. She asked me a question and I wrote her an answer. I gave her an answer. She wrote back to me, thank you so much for giving me that answer. It, it verified everything I believe and, and thank you so much and, and it was so wonderful and all this night. And then not a day later, she writes back and said, I just want you to know I disagreed with everything you told me. So, some of the folk in here have been keeping up on the soap opera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that not what happened? I mean, it's true. It's what happened. Oh, man, I appreciate you telling me that. And I didn't verify everything I believe. But I don't agree with anything you told me. So did it really verify what you believe? Amen. 
And, and so what do you do? You give them scripture and they don't like it. You tell them your opinion, they don't like it. Uh, you tell them they're wrong, they don't like it. Tell them they're right. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to aggravate you, I guess. Uh, but you, you have to realize that people are going to do that. And every time you give your opinion, somebody ain't going to like it. it. And it makes no difference what side of your mouth you smile from. Somebody's going to take offense to it. He's smiling at me. I tell you what, I, I know he's laughing at me, thinking about something about me. Just don't worry about it. Just smile back. Because you know you're thinking something about them, so just go on. Just, just drive them crazy. You know the best way to drive somebody crazy is that don't like you? Just agree with them. Agree with them. It drives them nuts. It, it drives them crazy. You know, you're dumb. Yeah, what? Isn't that something? Wow, well, I'm telling you what, I appreciate you letting me know that. I mean, I, I, I didn't realize it before, but I mean, since you said it, it's really come to my mind here. You know, it, it irritates people. What irritates people that don't like you is when you let them know you don't like yourself either. You know? <laughs> don't tell them you don't like them. You know, somebody says, I don't like you. You say, yeah, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Can I get a hug? It just irritates me. It works. I know I've tried it. But notice what happens, he said. He said, if you put forth your hand and touch all that he had, he will curse thee to thy face. What he's saying is, see, this is what Satan knows about the nature of man. As long as a man is prosperous, he's happy. Take away his prosperity. And what they do is they look at others that do have some. Why is it when somebody wins the lottery, everybody else gets jealous? Well, I bought a ticket too. Well, I didn't. So I didn't waste the dollar. How many of y'all, you know, don't raise your hand. I don't want you to be proclaimed guilty. But how many of you ever bought a ticket and didn't win? How many of you ever thought about buying a ticket and didn't win? Okay. Okay. See what I'm saying? And what you did. All you did was give a dollar to the millionaire and took your money. Well, so don't get mad at him. You gave him a dollar. Don't get, you ain't got the right to get mad at him. You gave him a dollar. Why don't you just take a dollar and go give it to somebody? I mean, think about it. You know, they, you know spend, give it to somebody that don't need it. They're not going to appreciate it. They're not going to want it. What, that's all you're going to give me? You don't need any more than that. But watch what happens. In, in verse 11, he said, look, they're going to curse you. But see, he knows. His words are so true that if you take away their prosperity, you take away their religion. All these preachers that are standing up today and, and pumping people to bring offerings and all this other stuff and, and all these big prosperity preachers that preach and all that, take away their money and take away their mega church. Guess what happened? they got no more religion left. They've got nothing. He said, Brother Barry, what if we take away all your prosperity? You'll do me a favor. I ain't got none. If you take it, man, I had something. I didn't, just didn't know where it was. Amen. And, uh, you, you know, I, I would hate to see a, uh, some of these preachers have to actually work on a job today. <laughs> They're not responding. Come on. <laughs> Look at what happens. When, when Job was attacked by his foe, how did Job respond? Look at verse number 20. Now, in, in these verses, what happens? Uh, for, let, me, let me just mention this. From verse 13 on, and it talks about how Satan came against him and he lost all his sons, his daughters. He lost his everything. Lost, he just took every all of his possessions from him. Left, left everything but one thing. I'll get to that in a minute. In verse 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. You know what most of us do? When we lose money, when we have a week off of work that we couldn't afford and we don't have a check, we cry, we gripe, we complain when we lose something. The Bible said that Job, uh, Job worshipped. He went to God and he, he began to worship Him. He said, and this is what he said. He said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. Job was a wise man. I would imagine second to Solomon. He had a lot of wisdom. Now, 
Solomon didn't have his wisdom until he asked, uh, until God asked him, what do you want? He said, just give me the wisdom to rule my people well. I don't want anything other than that. I just want to be a good king. And the Bible said there never was a man any wiser than Solomon. And I believe Job ranks right about number two at least. Okay? But then, notice in chapter 2, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. You say, Brother Barry, is it repeating itself? No, this is a different day. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. You notice he didn't really mention anything about Job. <laughs> I'm just doing my thing. Job's just another culprit that I've got to deal with. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that escheweth evil, and, uh, and uh, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Now what God did was, God used Satan to prove to Satan that God was in control. That there are people that will trust God no matter what. He was showing Satan something. He said, although movest thou me against him. What did he say there? You see, Satan moved God against Job. It was God that allowed Job to lose all these things he had. Without God allowing this, he'd have never lost his children. He'd have never lost his home. He'd have never lost his cattle. He'd have never lost anything. But notice what happened. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Now, a potsherd is a scraping tool. Imagine it's so bad, the, you know, the boils and the sores on his body was too putrid to touch. I ain't touching that. You take that little thing and you just scrape it to get all the infection on it. Doing the best he can. Well, God said, do what you will to his body, but don't kill him. You can't take His life. Why? Because your life is in the hand of God. You don't leave this world before God says so, and you don't stay here any longer than God says so. And that's what happened. we got to trust God. we got to believe that God does that. Amen? You can't control those things. You just need to trust God about that. You need to accept the things that you cannot control. Amen? And you need to control the things that you can control, which are the things inside of you. You control your mind. You control your thoughts. You control your own actions, but you can't control anything outside of your skin. This is the barrier between what you can and cannot control. You can't control anything outside of you. And then you trust God. Just remember that. Act. A-C-T. Accept what you can't control. Control what you can. And trust God for everything else. That's all you can do. Trust God that He's going to be God. 